to solve this equation between 0 and 2 pi, we know that between 0 and 2 pi is going to give us the solutions that are going to be on the unit circle, correct? Yep. A little bit differently if I said find all the solutions. That's when we had to do that you know, plus the 2 pi k and pi k or pi halves k or um, anything else that we would have in that form. But this is just going to be find, pretty much between 0 and 2 pi is just going to be finding all the solutions that are on the unit circle. To do that, though, we need to get this to be you know, solving. So I can't add these terms, because secant and tangent are not the, same, um, not the same term. So what I need to do is be able to identify, see, maybe you know, what are some operations I can do to maybe get these to at least one trigonometric term that I can apply. So Mackenzie, what I noticed was when I have tangent squared or anything squared, I want to identify my um, Pythagorean identities. And you have to go back, and before you guys take that end of the course EOC, please make sure you guys go back and review those identities. All right, just so you know how to apply them, because it is not something that will be provided for you. So when I'm looking at my Pythagorean identities, I need to see, well, I remember that secant and tangent are related to each other. right? And it went, I believe, 1 plus tangent squared of x equals secant squared of x. That was our Pythagorean identities with tangent and secant. And obviously, you can alter that um, how you want to. But I'm going to actually keep it this way because I want to rewrite secant in terms of tangent. Because I'd much rather try to solve with tangent than try to solve with secant. So what I'll do is in secant squared of x equals 1 plus tangent squared of x. Then plus tangent squared of x minus 3 equals 0. Does everybody see what I did? I just rewrote secant as 1 plus tangent squared. You got that, Kobe? Because that's not what you need to be doing right now. So then I can apply distributive property. 2 plus 2 tangent squared of x plus tangent squared of x minus 3 equals 0. These are like terms. These are like terms. So we combine them to 3 tangent squared of x uh, minus 1 equals 0. So now at least I have one trigonometric function, right? Does everybody see what I did, how I got it? That makes sense? So now let's isolate the trigonometric function. To do that, let's use our inverse operations. Just treat, forget about the tangent. Let's just get this by itself. So I add 1 to both sides. 3 tangent squared of x equals 1. Divide by 3. Tangent squared of x equals 1 third. Now I need to undo the squaring function, right? Because I just want to solve for tangent, not tangent squared. So I take the square root. Remember, the square root of a fraction is the same thing as square root of 1 over the square root of 3. Also remember, whenever you introduce the square root, it's positive and the negative values, right? You have to include positive and negative. So square root of 1 over square root of 3. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 3 is on the bottom. We want to rationalize the denominator. So I multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. And therefore, I get the square root of 3 over 3. So I can say that tangent of x equals the square root of 3 over 3. We still haven't solved anything yet. Now we just isolated, um, I'm sorry, plus or minus. Now we've just isolated the tangent function. So now what we're doing, our operation is we're trying to find x. x represents the angle, right? It's always tangent of an angle. So what we're pretty much doing is inverse tangent inverse of square root of 3 um, Actually, you want to see the angles that it's going to work um, for on there. And we're not actually going to be going through this. But let's go ahead. Let me go and back up. I'll, I'm not going to use that way. I'm going to use something different. So we have tangent of x equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. When does our values of x represent, or for tangent, what, for what angle is tangent, the value of our angle, tangent of our angle, equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. So to do that, we need to go back to our unit circle. And that is another thing that I would recommend that you guys make sure you go back and review before you take tests to make sure you can identify those values. I'm only concerned that you know how to do the first quadrant. Now, the first one I'm going to eliminate is pi over 4. Because pi over 4, the point on pi over 4, is square root of 2 over 2. We obviously know that the tangent of any angle is the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate, right? Well, obviously, any number divided by itself is going to be 1, right? So we know that pi over 4 is not going to be our answer. But I just had to make sure. So, so let's go to our first term, our first angle. 
That first point is square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Let's see if that works. Tangent of x equals 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. Those divide out. 1 over square root of 3 equals square root of 3 over 3. Right? I just didn't show you the rationalizing the denominator, but you guys can see it's the same thing. So what is then this angle? Does anybody remember? Pi over 6. So I can say x equals pi over 6. But now what I need to make sure I'm very careful with is that the only solution between 0 and 2 pi? Because we actually need to find all of these solutions. All right? And they can be positive or they can be negative. This is an example of a positive one. So therefore, I look across the unit circle to this angle. This angle is negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. The ratio is going to be exactly the same, but it will be negative. And since I took the square root, I introduced the positive and the negative. So yes, that angle works as well, which is 5 pi over 6. Then I go across the x-axis right here. And this angle is negative square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. Again, by using that ratio, it creates another positive angle. All right. So therefore, that angle is 7 pi over 6. Then I skip back across. And I look at that angle, which is square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half, which again, using the ratio, works, which is 11 pi over 6. So there are four solutions to that equation. Done. Thank you.